The film Rainbow Bridge, which you are about to see, was not made from a script nor from fiction. It is a living view of the harsh and sometimes beautiful truth of what tomorrow may bring to humankind. It is the answer to Alvin Toffler's future shock. It was made from blood, sweat, and tears. The trinity that helped propel another war in another time. Have you heard of the mystical population? Have you ever met anyone from this enigmatic section of the land? Do you know their mission, their destiny? Do you know that the space people have already established regular routes to the U.S.? And the makers of this film, who are energized with them, are in contact with them at will. The world is in the throes of accelerated chaos. The ever-growing dysfunction is dehydrating the mind of man and woman. And what are you doing as society disintegrates? Who will pick up the pieces? The burnt-out torch to finish the relay race to a better, saner world. And what are the new young, the new old, doing as the earth dissolves beneath their feet? Are the new young, the new old, anonymously working at something to postpone the prophecy of Armageddon? Jimi Hendrix, one of the stars of Rainbow Bridge, reminded us in a song a few days before his death that the messenger is coming. The world is not ready for this final event. Or is now the time? The new young wish to help make a better world. They don't want to inherit the pieces. Peace. World peace forever is within reach. The messenger has said so. And the new young, the new old, believe. But you are skeptical. Lean back and be joyfully shocked and enlightened that other eyes and minds are seeking a better way, a way out, an escape from a frozen world into a flexible sphere where there is more of singing and laughing than crying and dying. Worlds of resurrection. Worlds of reincarnation. The new young, the new old, know the answer is not drugs nor other hallucinatory concoctions. There is an answer, a solution. Together, we must find it. Perhaps it will be found in a spiritual form never envisioned by humankind. But it will not be found in war. When it comes, we will know, because the pattern will be wrapped in peace and love. The new young wish to dedicate their lives to something more constructive than dying on a battlefield, a main street, or in an alley. Rainbow Bridge offers some of the answers. We pray you will think of others.
do you want to know? I want to get on it. You want to buy a map to the Stars' home? Yeah. This is trip. Yeah, this is it. You got a quarter? No. Nope. You got a nickel? No. Nope. From the God Squad. In the beginning, God created the heavens and he created the earth and the spirit moved on the face of the waters and God said, let there be light. That if you're going to stand before the living God on these days, you don't have the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ on your soul, you're going to spend eternity in hell. Man, God's a little wishy-washy God that goes to church. And all things are made by him and for him. But how come everybody managed to fuck it up so nicely? We know something like God hates the forward mouth. And every darn thing done in secret be shouted at the rooftops. Everything you've ever done and ever spoken be burned of the judgment. And if you got sin upon your soul, God said the soul of sin is shall surely die. The wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. He paid a high price for your sins. Day is accepted. Don't put it off tomorrow. You're, like you, you're, you're so inside your body, you don't know when you're going to check out. You don't know when you're going to die. He's powerful and needs business with those that transgress his laws, man. He created everything good, and because of one man's sin, he cursed all the earth. And he's too you talking about? You've been left out of the Trinity altogether. Man, God said he's going to come back and take vengeance on man. That means you, too. That's right. No, Jesus said, unless you repent, you will likewise perish in the pits of hell. How can you escape the damnation of hell unless you repent? No, it's not a recording, but again, you are hung up on fear. Look at you. You're the one who talks about fear. The love is beginning all this. But this is you from you people with hell and burning and worms and fire and bullshit. Come on. God said I made this heaven and I didn't make it in vain. God made man to worship him. The thing is, you know, Jesus said about you people, he says you have ears, but you don't see. You have eyes. You have ears, but you don't see. That's in your case. Yeah, but the thing is, when you know the truth, the truth will make it free. You don't make it free. I think that we're all just going to have to, like, the police force, the lawyers, all the people that are running the whole thing, these hippies with long hair are just going to have to braid their hair up, put, a, put on a hat, man, and become policemen, you know, become lawyers, become doctors, you know. But then we're the same as everybody else. No, I mean, but with the idea, I mean, with the idea that you want to change the system, Oh, you can't defeat the system from within the system because then you're just part of it. I mean, you know, look at Clarence Williams. I mean, he's out there showing all those 10-year-old black kids that it's groovy to be a cop. You know, I grew up thinking I was Dale Evans. I mean, nobody told me I couldn't ride a horse. My dear, <laughs> could you imagine? I mean, Walt Disney is a, is a prime example. I mean, he's really I had a great hand in fucking it all up. Could you, could you imagine living in the ghetto, you know, a kid three years old using Mighty Mouse or Mickey Mouse, whoever it was, for uh, an idol, right? He's just a little kid running across the room for a gray rat thinking it was Mighty Mouse. Well, you Are can't, you ready? But you can't blame all of Walt Disney. Well, I can blame almost all of it, or half of it. Half of it, you know. But I mean, the real problem is... Because it's a whole fantasy, you know. I mean, you know, he... I think that they should take Ronald Reagan. Um... <laughs> All the governors of the South, I mean, I don't even want to call their names, you know, and uh, Nixon, and just lock them up in Disneyland. Oh, men lay down your toys to play with life. The moment of concern is here. The games you're playing are out of style.
you just did? What? Let me see your ID. You got a warrant. Let me see your ID. I don't have any ID. I left my black beaded bag at home. Where's home? The Big Apple. In New York, New York. What's your purpose in being here? I'm visiting my old black granny in the ghetto. What's your grandmother's name? Ida Mae Sheriff. We'll just see if we can find your black grandmammy.
Our Tokyo and Hong Kong passengers proceed directly to customs. Our Tokyo and Hong Kong passengers proceed directly to customs. Harry Chan report to White Cab, please. Harry Chan, White Cab. Hello. Let's go smoke it. Announcing the immediate departure from platform seven of express bus to Pearl Harbor. あ、そこにホテルが立ちます。あ、そこにホテルが立ちます。あ、それ <laughs> this is Concept Swire Air Station. You know where they track all these satellites down? This is the, in the middle of the ocean. They do that here. looking for these thingies on the beach. Can you find well, anything? Yeah, well, you see these little shells? Well, if you get a thousand of those and uh, you boil them up, 
You get stoned out of your head. No. Yeah, that is not. That's what I said. Look at these things. Yeah, yeah. You've got to do a thousand in now. And you boil them up slow, boy. Yeah. Really? And they're only found on the beach at Waikiki. Tell me at first. Okay, Yeah, she's only beach. Come out of the hotel drained you you look for diamonds. No, look, there's psychedelic stones that come out of the hotel drained. Look, I think he got one over there. <laughs> look, there's that's it. That's it. Yeah, those things there. Yeah, that's it. That is? A thousand of those you got It's easy though, because most people don't believe you. We <laughs> <laughs> didn't believe really it about the bloody bananas either. You crazy old man. Well, you know, that's the kind of cover. <laughs> The great invocation from the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men, let light descend on earth from the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men, may Christ return to earth, let the plan of love and light work out. And may it seal the door for your evil wealth. Let light and love and power restore the land on earth. Visualize standing upon a beach. Looking upon a deep blue vast ocean and see on the horizon slowly rising a blazing sun plunge yourself into the sea free free of any encumbrances worries problems and swim strong and realize that you are not alone but you're swimming with a group of brothers free and together. And as you swim towards this blazing sun, you see in the water a boat, and rhythmically and in harmony of purpose, motive, and direction, you move this boat towards the sun. And as we face the sun, we see coming from this light a more distinct and brighter light. As we begin to recognize this light, we see the image of our pure self our divine being, the Christ aspect, the impersonal self, the God within us.
we can straighten it out. We can straighten it out with our knowledge. With what? We can replant the planet. We can replant it with our scientific ability. It fits right into the platform. It works. Is it wrapping up the cataclysm? Oh, it's here. <laughs> it's coming up the driveway. Oh. Hartley's coming. <laughs> the chick that Bruce sent out to check on the house, see if everything's oh. all right? Oh, yes. She's coming now up the driveway. Yeah. So we've <laughs> got to do something to get it all together. Let's give her a light. <laughs> give her a light? Let's together enough. Everything's okay. She We're all going to be back on Front Street. Hello? Hello? Oh, it's Hartley. Oh my God, I'm on land, I'm seeing in the air. Oh, you're so fine. Look at the penny I found on your door. Out here? Hundreds of them. Financial disaster. <laughs> Claire, it's only the beginning. Um, Hartley, this is Baron. Claire. Susie. Paul. Hi. Chris. And Tiffy up on the altar. You have to sacrifice the lawyers, not until later. <laughs> well, we're going to do with those people up there because they're the only people that are worth listening to. Well, how can you decide who's right? worth listening to? You can decide. How do you know I'm not worth listening to? You haven't even talked to me yet. I yeah, know, I can listen to you. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> come to your room. Oh, thank you. Let me get that first. Oh, come on. See you in a little while. Take care of the altar while I'm out. Are those some of the deities, or is that the staff? Those are some of the most beautiful people in the world in there. Really? Well, I better hurry up and something to something spiritual. That makes plenty holy to me. <laughs> Rainbow Bridge clue. What is it, the Ten of Cups? Well, it's looking a bit better. Nice room. Pretty mother. I hope she didn't die in a bed. <laughs> you know, that's all I need. <laughs> This is Ten of Cups is almost right on. You got the rainbow, all the people dancing around happily. Except that, I mean, it's like watching the Joshua Light Show, right? God. And you gotta pay two fifty to get in to see it. If you eat all the right foods, you do all the right do they might with your peak. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is that what the Rainbow Bridge is all about? Yeah, I'll get the wizard to wrap the whole thing down to you. All the Rainbow Bridge is the bridge between here and here and here, between the lower self and the higher self. You've got to tell me how you got Bruce and Scammy to come here. How did you work it? Well, I didn't do anything. It's completely cosmic. Listen, a friend of mine met him at a party. Right? And he was all drugged and doped up and wondering, mumbling and saying, I've got this meditation center on Maui and blah, 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 blah. And the guy was saying, are you crazy? You're giving all that people all that bread to go out there and live in your mother's house and fuck it all up and do nothing with it. Send somebody out to check. And I have just the person. <laughs> <laughs> it's so perfect. I was so terrified of what type of person you'd be. Yeah, well, I didn't know what was going on here. I thought it would be Harry Christening the days. <laughs> well, they're doing that. Well, I think it's a little free vacation. I'd check it out. If it's too much of a drag, I'd split. Did you meet Bruce? Yeah, I met him in Apple Valley. Oh. I wasn't exactly... What think of him? Oh, he's a little, he's a little nervous. <laughs> Chuck's we making a cosmic surfing movie. Oh, you're going to film the surfers? I mean, not, not, not just them, but I mean the, the cosmic surfers. When we were starting, Bruce wanted this whole kind of image-building thing of, of doing a trip on the consciousness of surfing in Hawaii. And so that was our first project out here. It's not the same as everybody thinks it is. It's not a uh, bikini beach party where the surfers just lying out on the beach drinking beer, bumming around with the uh, evening orgies. It's more that they've been through all the changes ahead of everybody else. They've been through yoga, zen, and pure food way before.
Yeah. I didn't think you was going to make it, man. I didn't think I was going to make it either. A lot of things came down between then and now, but I made it. All right. What happened? Well, I was at the airport in Honolulu. They kept me for a couple hours, put me in a room, asked me questions. I didn't know what I was there for. I didn't know if they knew me. I didn't know anything. Finally, after a couple hours, they cut me loose. I came straight over here to see you guys. And you guys look like, uh, I don't know what's happening. What's going on? Well, David and Barry just left. The surf's been flat. We've oh. been doing nothing but just dragging out, you know, and wow. doing our scene. I guess why that's, that's why the Dow brought me here at this time. Some for us, because wow. really, you yeah. came through for us. I want oh, you to open Dow. up these panels here and here. Take this now. Oh, for sure. Oh, crazy. I, need, I need to smoke a joint. This is Ganja from Vietnam. You won't believe what's going on out here. Hurry up and get it together. Okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. You got that? All right, my Ah, uh -huh, look at this. Afghanistan. Primo pollen. Look at that. Transiting Scorpio right now. Scorpio. Everything's Scorpio around here. We can't get away from Scorpio. There's Scorpio again. Well, we're going to get this thing together. We really got to find out what makes her tick, where her head's at. All I have to do is rechannel her energy, and that's very easy. How about the Mercury? Let's start with the Mercury. Oh, well, the Mercury would be good, but the South Node would be easier. Hi. Come and join us on our next exercise. Are you off on your spiritual PE? Now we'll all sit down. Easy pose as full lotus as possible. Beautiful. Hands on shoulders, right in the center. Oof. <sighs> On the inhale, turn your upper part of your body to the right. And on the exhale, to the left. <laughs> <laughs> what? My shoulder. More. <laughs> no more. <sighs> purifying energy. That's what I want to do, channel the violet light to you. We have force fields around us, electromagnetic force fields, and there are centers that the Easterners, the Indians call chakras, and they receive the pranic energy, those little globules of light that we see sometimes against the sun. 
And that energy comes into our ether or spiritual bodies and then to our endocrine gland system and is funneled to the bloodstream to raise our vibration and purify us. So what we're doing is channeling to the spiritual body. Over past lifetimes and in this lifetime, negative thoughts and energies have built up and the centers that receive the third eye, the front pituitary, the pineal, the thyroid, and the thymus, they have been blocked off by negative thoughts and actions which form obstructions to the inflow of the cosmic energies. And channeling divine light, violet light to that spiritual body, to those centers, speeds up the motion of the wheel and they receive more and everybody's vibration goes up. I'm hearing about my horse. What are you doing? Is it in my chart yet? Yeah, I got it right here. Uh, What's been bothering you anyway? It's been bothering me. Uh, you just want to know something about yourself personally? Yeah. Well, you've got the sun in Scorpio in the 12th, Scorpio rising, and the moon in Aquarius in the third house. Uranus in the seventh house, Mars right, in the seventh me. house. Uh, you don't know too much about the planets. Well, the 12th house is the house of limitations, sorrows, uh, self-undoing. It's like energy that uh, doesn't do a person any good. Uh, third house is communication, seventh house is long-term arrangements. Which means your sex life is prone to all kinds of trips, freaky trips, bisexual trips, insane uh, trips, drug trips. Wes, is this my chart? It's probably Hartley. Oh, there's your name right there. Oh, okay. <laughs> did you get it oh, all Hartley, right, yeah. times and everything? Uh, yeah, I did it three times. I don't make too many mistakes with horoscopes, except reading them sometimes. <laughs> Mars is in the seventh house, which means all your energy is there in the sign of Gemini, which is the intellect, and it's also the uh, schizophrenic sign, the twins, both sides happening. It's pretty well conjunct Saturn, about four degrees away in the eighth house, the sex house, so it, it all works together in the same house, which means uh, freaking is the nature, although there's been a lot of sex bummers in your life, especially with a Venus and Virgo. A lot of lessons have been learned with sex bummers and freaking, but freaking is truly your what nature. What about freaking in my chart? You, know, you have the chart of a freak. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to have the chart well, of a yeah, freak. Well, you probably refuse to see it because the sun's in the 12th house. You see only the limits of freaking rather than the, un the real enjoyment behind it. Study some of the higher things. Get a little energy in from higher people. It'll be a little more expressive of a lot of the good trips that are happening. Who do I get the energy from? The Leos, really. Pisces would be good, but Leos would be even better. Virgos would be nice. You have Venus and Virgo, you know. What does all that mean, Venus and Virgo and all that? Well, Venus is the love nature and Virgo is the sign of prudence. Uh, it just means your, your love nature is kind of prudent, you know. Every time you ball, it's like the first time. You know? <laughs> that must not be my chart. <laughs> Somebody else's, obviously. Well, this is your chart, but you don't see your own trip too well. With the sun in the 12th house, you see more, more your limitations than your, your positive parts. This is the most depressing place on Earth. But this place? This place here? And you, how, how many come? places have you been? A lot of places. I <laughs> used to be, right? But I've never been any place. <laughs> so then somehow, mysteriously, I went a lot of places. But it's so depressing because this paradise is so completely fucked up. I mean, you sit around New York City and everybody says, oh, I've got to get out of the buildings, the noise, the clatter, the bang. And you come play someplace like this, and I see people living behind barbed wire on naval bases, little children playing on swings and barbed wire. Sure, you see it everywhere. No, but that's the whole problem, then, because California was supposed to be the land of wealth and promise, the land of milk and honey, the great migration. There is no land of wealth and promise. I know. I know. you believe that, you're a fool. You just have to hope that the divine plan has a good end. What and divine give plan? You are the fucking divine plan. You keep giving it away to everybody. No one's going to save you. I mean, are you going to sit back and say there's a divine plan? Uh. Krishna, Krishna. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, what, what divine plan? You're the divine plan. You made the divine plan. Well, then obviously that'll happen. You know, what happen? Well, what is happening and what has been happening? The same <laughs> bullshit the whole time. Right? What and it always goes on. Everybody sits there and goes, ah, bullshit. That was bullshit. bullshit. Are you just afraid of taking responsibility for anything, including yourself? That's own? exactly right. Because well, that's look what it does. Look at the game. Look at the divine. Look what happened to the what world. Kind of look at where it's at. You game. just wrapped 15 show. minutes about how screwed it all is. Well, that's from people telling other people what to do. See, that's the whole problem. See, that's just is that people ego. aren't turned into God enough to accept it when their brother does come to them behind. They can go with a divine, you know, with love. Well, oh, the consciousness of God. Well, I mean, it comes to everyone. It's very vibration that everybody's into God for themselves. Very little sharing. No, 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 it's for everyone. It's for everyone. The best example you can do for people now is to teach them or show them, by your own example, the value of meditation. Like you're saying, you can't just meditate. It's true, you can't just meditate. But everybody needs to meditate a little bit. And when somebody's hanging over your shoulder you while you're meditating, I they should have been really waiting. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> if somebody's hanging over your shoulder when you're meditating, it shouldn't be because you should close the door when you meditate, see? And then you go out and you give what you've received when you meditate. 
Most of the people that we know, and a lot of people that you will see in the street, you get the thought that they are in sympathy. There are a lot of us that are in sympathy with each other. The people that are not in sympathy, the people that go oil, are not in sympathy at all. They meditate not at all, ever. They may take a few tranquilizers now and then, but they don't do very much meditation. Uh, Nixon and his entire staff of lunatics are not into heavy meditation. Reagan is going to cut down the redwood trees while you're sitting underneath them, oming. You know, they're all going to fall on your head. We can't do nothing. We've got to learn how to concentrate. We've got to learn how to focus our energy. Yeah, but you, you focus know? your energy already. You are a person that knows that. No, man. I don't you're know. I just started, man. And I'm finding, out, I'm finding out what you can do with concentration. Yeah, but just because I got a hot shot time. number, why don't you give it away to some other people? I, well, well, I'm, I'm telling you. That's right. right. You that's need to concentrate. Why concentrate. Right, you know what I'm saying? Fill your no, mind no. on one thing. Get it together. <laughs> but that's it, you know? No, come on. Oh, second concentration makes me hungry, man. that there are literally millions of acres in the United States that are used for the production of totally non-nutritive products such as, such as tobacco. And sugar. Exactly. You're into unidentified flying objects, flying saucers, extraterrestrials. You've, you've actually made contact with these people? Uh, yes, there are I many mean, people here at Rainbow Bridge who have made contact. Uh, there are all levels of contact. There are energy contacts or actual up, visual up, sightings. We looked up. I saw coming down to the valley these 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 two li green lights and a red light with a kind of a swirl motion flying over the treetops about 50 feet, not making you know too much noise, just cruising. And then I I went wow you know from the just flashing it, and I told them, and everybody else looked out, and they caught a glimpse of it as it went by. You saw it too, Dale? Yeah. There are people who have taken valley. real trips. There are people who are almost day to day feeling the imprint of that higher consciousness energy. I mean, the real trip is that uh, the electricity and oil monopolies are in control of this planet and the Space Brothers are here to help us remove ourselves from that malevolent aegis and uh, they're going to do it any way possible. Right now, uh, I, what is their plan? The pl this I'm is not making anything. <laughs> At the same time, we're also just being pumped into Kahului Harbor and into Lahaina Harbor. Staff infection, uh, surfers suffer from it badly. At the same time, there are plans to develop uh, a big uh, harbor complex in Malaya. Oh, no, 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 it can't be. They can't do that. No, there's thousands of people who, who look at that pond that spot as being the perfect wave of this planet.
essential problem with ecology today is that there is very little ecology left. There are only ecologists. The pro-fluoridation forces have not produced anybody to present their case. So without further ado, I'm going to give you Dr. Brutter because he needs no introduction because he'll do his own introduction if I remember Dr. Brutter. I'm one of you. My father muscle life were gassed and burned. I mixed cement as a slave in a concentration camps until I was able to escape, to flee on my third attempt back to American freedom. Dr. Brutter. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, human beings, because the whole planet is today in danger. <clears throat> From 1937 till 1970, that is for 33 full years, every single ounce of any kind of soluble fluoride poisonous fluoride, must be covered blue, must be marked deadly poison, skull and grass bones, keep away from children, that is the law. So when it goes to an exterminator to kill rats in 1970, it must be blue or the man goes to prison. When it goes to waterworks to harden our baby's teeth, it's snow white, it's outside jurisdiction of FBI, no one in Washington's jurisdiction. 3,000 years ago, Moses said, Every human being is responsible for his action, or that being is still a beast, not yet human. <laughs> they are not chemists. They do not know that the soluble fluoride will not only fill the pores and harden the teeth, 30 to 60 percent, as they correctly claim, on the way to the teeth, the soluble fluoride will also fill the pores and half the arteries, the kidneys, the heart, and the brain, 30 to 60 percent, making the whole nation much more stupid. Is this a holocaust or a cataclysm? This is a cataclysm now. You tell me how to make a light bulb. Tell me anything. <laughs> the sun is supposedly going out of the galaxy. We're all revolving. This, this system is revolving around the 29th degree of Taurus in the eye of the bull, and it's a fixed star called Alcyone, or all C1. And the whole, the whole system is going out, but Earth is not aligned right now. And that's why the Space Brothers are here, to get Earth all in line. And the are they going to come and actually tell us or help us? Yeah, but then, us. Then, then what do you do with the situation that because of the atomic explosions we're becoming farther and farther off our axis? Now, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? That's a bad thing. In fact, well, how do you know? Einstein's nephew says that... Hey, this comment, comes this in. messenger of God that comes half as close as the sun, 50 million miles, at 4 million miles an hour, almost as big as the moon, with a hundred million mile long fiery tail, almost collides with this earth for 72 hours, and it doesn't collide. And I'm sketchful. This convinces the most stupid atheist that an eternal, ever-loving, almighty power is running this universe. The atomic scientists in China, in Russia, in America, in England, in France, they disagree like all politicians, except on one point. Since 1968, they agree that this planet Earth has been slowed down a quarter second a day, which means nothing on your watch, because that's only 90 seconds a year, a minute and a half. But in a short time, as the universe goes, planet Earth will be slowed down enough that it will be directly in the path of Halley's Comet that comes as sure as night every 76 years. And when we are in the path of Halley's Comet, there'll be a supernova. We won't feel nothing. We won't even be dust. We will just be fire. Like we started. As sure as my uncle Albert Einstein made a deep impression with his logic, I assure you, there is no question that there is more than one billion Earths with human beings on it, very much like this one. <laughs> And these ecologists are being forced to become militant and uh, violent in a way that, that is contrary to their whole thing. The, the reason for this is because the, the ecological situation now is the same as the nuclear situation, which is that we are, our pollution potential is so high at this point that any little culture or any little group sitting anywhere can produce enough poison into the air, into the water, or the ground, or anywhere else to kill everybody. So it's just like some fool sitting around with a button to push to send off a bunch of nuclear missiles.
protest in the streets are really together? Well, I think the difference between being a student and, and a young person in the streets of the same age or, you know, a couple of years older used to be a lot greater. I mean, you know, since Columbia, it all sort of seemed to solidify. I mean, when I sat in school, I mean, the, 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 the choice was do we wear black armbands to the air raid drill. You know, the emotions were still the yeah. same. The recognition of the problems were still the same. And the problems are obviously polarized, so the emotions on both sides are, are higher, and the problems are much stronger. Was, but with the breaking of that barrier in Colombia, it was a fantastic thing. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, you cannot sit, in a, you know, behind a desk for four years paid for by a man whose, you know, life and political feelings go against everything that you stand for. It was different between our parents and, mm -hmm. and us, you know. But to that bridge that kind of gap. But there is a big difference being in the university situation. You know? The only criticism I have of them, and it's true also of all of us, I think, um, is that we're not open enough to one another's trips. This is really a danger because any group that says, we really want to love all of humanity, but not you guys, you know, or cuts people off somewhere, it just seems like they're not really going to succeed as far as I'm concerned. You know, the first time we landed on this planet, it was really a beautiful garden. hear about working as a group before for a purpose like like setting up an ideal you know like like the ideal that our <laughs> forefathers you know came to america for I, they saw it as a beautiful place to start a, a paradise to turn the rest of the world on do you understand the incarnation incarnation yes i do the first time you were in spain a marquis from spain you're going to Arab and got to a rich woman from Arab, you go to Chinese and go to have work in a temple. From Chinese, you go to Japanese and go to a poor woman to have sell flour on a boat. From Japanese, you go to Himalaya. Baron, who are you anyway? I'm the same thing that you are. Beyond time, beyond space. I'm beyond this body and beyond the form. I am the beingness that uses this body to experience this realm, this world, the physical universe. But I am not these things, but the experience behind this universe, this physical universe. I am transcendental to everything I manifest as physically. I am beyond this, for I see through this. I have been here for all time and before time, for we created time. I am transcendental to this experience to this place, to this form, to this world of forms. I see through the form, for I created the form. I experience the form, but I am not the form. I am the beingness that uses these eyes to see, but I am not these eyes. I am beyond these eyes, beyond this voice. I merely use these eyes and this voice as vehicles. To experience this form, to experience this form world, to experience this form universe. I am beyond all time, for I am before time, and I am beyond time. I am transcendental to this universe. I am the same beingness that is you. Mr. 
Mr. Rabbit! Does anybody know what's going on around here? Hello? You can relate to your father without getting emotional and uptight and paranoid and defensive. You've really got it together. I haven't bumped heads for about three years now. The last time it was so heavy, he was when I left the house. He was trying to call the police to have him take me away, you know, because <laughs> I was a threat, a total threat to his reality, which is a very scientific, precise, rational, reason, intellectual reality, and I was going in the opposite direction into mysticism and unreason and religion and LSD and all that sort of thing, you know. Put your relationship with your father. What, what's the story? What kind of thing do you have going together? Well, the first time I met my father was a couple of years ago. <laughs> but I grew up with a stepfather since I was four. And it was a very unhappy situation. What do you want your stepfather or meeting you knew it? Well, both. My stepfather, um, my mother married him when I was four, just so I could have a name, because I, you know, she had been unmarried. And my stepfather constantly told me that the whole time, that I was a bastard. Mm -hmm. and because I was dark and he was howly, so he constantly mm -hmm. reminded me that I was black. Uh, that's a pretty good test. Yeah. If, if you can make it through a relationship with him and not be brought down to an emotional level, you, you should be really getting strong. I mean, it's a great yoga. I found myself the last time I was home. At first, my father started rapping on me, and, you know, at first I just let it bounce off, and then all of a sudden I got involved, and I got emotionally into it, you know, and I got pissed off, and I just finally told yeah. him, oh, fuck you, man. Right. <laughs> you know? Blew it. Yeah. Blew it. And then I had all this tension, you know, and I felt like, God, where am I really at, you know? Did LSD bring you closer to God? Mm-hmm. It did. How? Um, I didn't know there was God before I took it. And then after I took it, I realized there was God after I took it for a while, you know? Mm-hmm. Acid is uh, just a little extra energy. You know, it's a high-powered food. And that's what God is. God is energy. I don't know, man. It's like LSD good, LSD bad. Every minute we're hearing something else. Nobody really comes out and says what really happened to them. One moment, if they want to be godly and spiritual, they come on saying, no, no, man, it really wrecked my life. It's going to destroy people. They all died on it. Uh, the next moment, they have no other way to explain their expanding consciousness except to say, wow, it was the acid. I mean, if it came at all, it came because it was supposed to be here to help change people's minds and let them see through the illusions of society and family and all the other stuff that was blocking them. And now they're open. I don't say keep taking it, but that energy was a heavy burst coming right through. How much is the dose, man? How much is the amount that's going to help you and how much is going to be the over overdose, man? Can you tell me that? There's no overdose, and there's no amount that's going to help you. Right. There is no amount that's going to help you. I mean, you because take... any amount of that is just an, a consciousness of excitation. That's why I'm always so excited as it is now, man, because I still haven't got myself to a peaceful state, man, ever since I've been through all those changes. That's why you, your mind keeps changing all the time. Were man. you in a peaceful state before that? You wouldn't have taken the acid if you were in a peaceful state. You were looking. You were searching. Yeah, yeah. That was searching. available. Yes, so that was one of the blind avenues that ran down, too. Okay, in the beginning, I can remember one experience where there was 30 people up on top of a mountain. And, and uh, at, one, at, at a point during the experience, I took three hits and everybody else took one. And I remember during, at one point during the experience, everybody just started losing it, falling out. And everybody got up and split, man, and started wandering off in the woods until we heard a voice from the sky that said, everybody stay right where you are. And everybody was drawn right back to the circle and couldn't go anywhere at all. And then, then I heard five commandments, man, out of the sky. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, and thou shalt not kill. And then, from that, I was so deeply attached to that religious experience that I wanted to repeat that experience. I wanted it again. But no matter what dose of LSD I ever took, 
I could never find it. And because I had experienced that on LSD, it brought to me that attachment to that experience where I thought I could have that instantaneously. And it led me deeper and deeper into the delusion, man, that I could, that I could get that again and I, and I couldn't until I got to the point where I was taking two hits of, of LSD every morning when I got up and I'd take 10 hits on the weekend, man, just trying to reach that same state and I could never reach it. Uh, yeah, you kept taking You must have thought something was happening. You were surfing on it, right? You were going out there in the bay because you dug that experience. I was, I was surfing on it in the daytime and you learn to handle the situation when you're loaded on LSD by not handling the situation. peace of mind, if you're really going to get together, you're going to have to do it with something that nobody can steal from you, something that nobody can stop selling to you or put you in jail so you can't maintain it. You're going to have to become self-realized to the peace within yourself on your own. And beyond that, once you become self-realized, you're going to have to learn how to express it, how to experience it constantly, how to use the vehicles that you've got, whether it's your emotions, your mind, or your body to express the divine thing that you discover yourself to be, and you can only discover that yourself. Watch out, you're gonna hurt somebody, and that ain't the way of oh. Have a great... Oh, thank you. This is weird. I can't figure out whether I'm um, Hansel and Gretel or Tristan and I spoke. You're Hansel and I'm Gretel. Oh, yeah? That makes us more like kids, huh? Hey, LP. Mm. Do you think there's anything to, uh, to the thought that women could be lower forms of life, lower evolved? Well, I don't know. I don't think that the sex of the, of the body that the soul is living in is really has anything to do with the point of the evolution. But I do feel what, you, what you're talking about, about the uh, expression of the masculine and feminine principle, whereas the... Uh, masculine exhibits the law, and the intellect, and the uh, feminine exhibits the love, the heart. The female, running uh, totally on the heart, it just really leads them here and there, and just spins them out totally. While the male possibly could be a later incarnation, already experiencing the heart, and now experiencing more into mental, into the mind, and therefore be realizing that there does need to be a connection between the heart and the mind. Well, so many women I know are so totally on the heart that they're just never thinking. They're just love this, love that, and they're just spinning people out, mixing themselves up back and forth. It's so far out, you know, really being close with a woman. I really feel so much energy that comes through that, oh, man, I can't explain it. It's like it, it gets me high being this close with a woman, but there's, there's something else that... Uh. So let's draw some of that energy. <laughs> let's make love. You, you can't make love. Why not? Love is. What are you talking about? Well, I know what love is. But don't you think it's nice to be that much closer to someone? To feel that much of their energy and your energy together? Wasn't that what we're doing? Yes. Well, I don't need to bother you to, <laughs> to feel that. But don't you, don't you think it's the utmost? If you want to bring the soul in, sure, but this fluid, this energy I've got inside of me is for building bodies. If I'm, if I'm not building a body for a soul, I use it for myself. What? <laughs> I mean, like, I don't, I don't, it sounds selfish, but this vital energy that flows through me it, it builds my body. It keeps me alive. It's what I feed off of. But it's what I feed off of. Exactly. So we don't waste it. We keep it within us. But it's not wasting. I mean, you're sharing it with me. I believe that the heart chakra is definitely overloaded. The emotions uh, is r really running wild. As an uh, example, of, you know, we can see all this free sex in the last few years. It's actually an overload in the uh, emotional plane. You don't think that making love, becoming one, does it make you higher? What if I wasn't able? What if I had been injured? 
Would that limit me from being able to really experience you? But you're not. I know. But isn't there that thing that we can experience without having to indulge in the... Yes, but why deny ourselves of such a great pleasure? I mean, we're both young and, and so full of life, and there's so much to experience and to feel. We should never shut the door. Why deny yourself of that cosmic energy, that vital fluid that keeps you alive, that no, 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 I have so much of it. I have so much to spare. <laughs> Oh, Ben, I wish there was more men like you. Oh, of course, that's good. Well, when they possibly, in a later incarnation as a male, the realization in the mind, you know, comes in, and then, they, then you can put your heart and your mind together, because I feel that my heart really has a lot to do with the way I run. But a lot of times I stop it mentally and say, this is not right, even though... It's, you know, it's beautiful and it's whatever, but it's not right what's coming down right now. It could cause pain, even though I'm unaware of it. You just lie there. You ought to get a girlfriend or something. You've been taking too much dope or something. Oh, Lucas, do you think sex prevents you to come closer to God? No, I don't think it does. Like, I was taught that it did, you know? I think a lot of people have been. It makes it kind of difficult. Mm -hmm. But I don't think sex really keeps you from getting close to God. I think sex is the way of getting closer to God, you know, depending on where you're living, what you're doing, and so on. I'd like to each person to decide. Okay, first of all, I think um, homosexuality is an off balance in nature. It is. And secondly, sex, drugs, and alcohol, and many other things you would have to sit down and write down are the downfall of the society. I have no idea whether homosexuality is right or wrong. Well, why does it touch you so much that you had to split that we couldn't talk about? I don't know what you... you I put your hand down and you keep doing it. That's not enough or what? No? Sometimes they might better punch you out, you know? Well, why is that? Because I don't think people would do that kind of stuff. Why don't you look me in the eye, Chris? Okay. Why? Why you you do that? Say, look at me in the eye. Because I feel that people are more honest when they look at each other in the eye. Yeah, well, I'm honest whether I look at you in the eye or not. That's the reason I touched you instead of started rapping with you. Because I wanted your honest reaction, not a bullshit rap. Oh, yeah, well, you never get those kind of me. Well, that's what I'm getting right now, I feel. No, you're not. And there you are, again, seeking the gratification of your ego. And therefore, all of you have problems, so many problems. You have to look at yourself, you have to look at the truth, you have to look at your problems. Search, search your intelligent people, man. Why going to dope, spend hours, ten hours smoking something and then lay around and walk around without being aware of what you're doing? You should feel a love for each other. I don't see this love. How is this possible? Don't use each other. Don't put a trip of one on the other. You're all in chain. <laughs> the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Twenty-one men on the dance chest are.
the first yeah. of August, right? He's doing concert. And if we can find a goofy place for him to play, he says he'll come out for two weeks. The crater! No crater. crater. Try, try someplace more. Yeah, there are plenty of places. Other Pluto places. Well, anyway, man, just get it together. We need some energy Cop around here. Cop over the rain. Yeah. Oh, over the rain. Beautiful. There's How all about the saints around here. I'm likely to float away. Ula Palakula. That'd be a far out Pluto place to do it. Ula Palakula? Ula Palakula. 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 Hula, 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 hula. Hula's getting the energies up from the base of the spine, which Jimmy's tapping this high energy source. Of well, you tap whatever you want to tap. <laughs> 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 Is this going to be more? More. <laughs> 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 you just burn the ring. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're going to keep trash. Sorry, he's laying on everybody. This is the spider's ring. We're all part of some greater movement that's moving us without our even knowing that it's all too easy. You want to hard all the time. Why do you want to hard all the time? Excuse me. Oh, uh-huh. Uh -huh. Stranger from a strange land. Oh, wow. This place gets tighter and tighter. Oh, that's why. He's just throwing his hat into the ring. I got rid of my wizard's hat because I said there's something happening that's happening in the group. You don't need a leader at all. There's no more leader. Yeah, for what? For I've seen some flags where I just pulled in, but I don't know exactly what's going on right here. They tell me when you see flags, it's got to be the temple. You think we've arrived at the temple? But if it's only true, we could have done it. Maybe we should just have done it anyway. Is it that way with everything? If it's only true, we could have done it. It's not like everything that you know, was back there. Well, that's the pyramid wall again. Well, that's what everybody keeps rapidly tapping on. Did you ever dream you were in a pyramid? Yeah. I had it one time over in Florida. I thought it was maybe it had something to do with a pyramid. I didn't know. Maybe in one of my past lives or something. Oh. Uh, Pardon? Hey, I'm stunned now, so I have a, a pillow. Listen, if your past lives ever did you any good, you wouldn't have to come back and do them again. You wouldn't have any past lives. Where are you going to this one? How do I get good? Only this one. Is that what you're looking for? This is the one. Oh, yeah. But the, 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 the thing is, if you resolve it, well, why do you keep coming back to the same trip? Well. <laughs> Right. What's this about you being a wizard and all this? Throwing in your hat. What is this about? You used to be a wizard, I take it. Yeah. <laughs> well, show me a trick, dude. Show you you have enough guts to give up your wizard hat. Give me a beer. Get... A beer? 
Oh, great. Now I get to play the tricks. Oh. <laughs> See this top? Flop. Uh, Hubbard. Under the cover and pull out a last bone dry beer for the lady, of course. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, you told me anybody who wanted to could be Jesus. If you wanted I told you that? Yeah, you told me that. Well, right, we'll pick up on it then. I thought there was a death going on around here, so I see the dead hat laying over there. Death of the, the ego. Death of the, oh, so then you're not going to be no wizard anymore? No, I'm not going to be a wizard anymore. So what you going to be? You, found a, you must have fell in love. Uh-huh. It's hard. You can always remember somebody sat next to you in third grade. And then that's the easy part. The thing to do is try to find out where they are now. You ever seen anybody from third grade? I was just a little Do you remember back that far? Who said that? Yeah, my teacher sat next to me in the third grade because I was a dunce. She sat, she sat in the front office, you know, like in the front desk, and like did a thing like talk about. Now this is an example, and at the same time, she's saying this is an example. She's touching my kneecaps <laughs> under the tables, but you know, I was there. Third grade. I never could sit with everybody else. And she said, how are you feeling? And I say some kind of spacey, like, well, it depends on how the people on Mars are feeling. She says, well, you go to the front for that. It's like going to the little cubby hole. It's like the uh, Gestapo motorcycles, you know. <laughs> little driver sits on the motorcycle and the, the commander sits on the uh, cubby hole, you know. That's the favorite position, though. That's the best position to be in. Yeah. Who knows? I didn't know then. You, you, so thought you, were, you thought you were from Mars in the third grade? It took me a little I while. didn't think it, actually. I just didn't know what else to say to her. I, I got tired of saying, fine, thank you. See, sometimes it gets to be strenuous. Like, for instance, when you try to clean marijuana with still metallic uh, tea strainers. Sin, 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 you died as a rabbit being ran over by a Big Mac truck. Ooh. A sin. But then again, you threw away your wizard hat. And yeah. I had a book of matches in my back pocket. Like the item of the fire or something. What's your name? Oh, I like you, you know what I mean? We're talking about judgment, yeah? And you say that you can't judge, yeah? I don't think that any of us are in a position to judge anybody. I mean, how can you say that anybody can be more spiritual trip than anybody else? I mean, you can't judge that. That's not for us to say. Don't you have to judge? I can't judge anybody. I'm not in a position to judge anybody. I don't think you are either. I don't think any of us as, as mortals are in the position to judge anybody. I have to judge why. Why do you have to judge it? Who put you in the position to judge it? Myself. If I want to go into a miserable life, I make the wrong decisions. <laughs> and yeah, if I want to go into a better okay, life, how can I you pick say, and choose better. How can you say that Hartley is less spiritual than somebody else? If she boogaloo's her way all the, all the way to heaven, she's still going to get to heaven. You don't I mean, everybody your uses their own do, method. You don't boogaloo your way to heaven. <laughs> Who says? Why? How can you say that? How do you know that maybe that's not the plan? I know the way to heaven. How do you know? <laughs> there they go again. They're always doing it. They're, yeah, they're always confronting each other. Huh? They seek each other out the whole time. Why do you think that's happening? I don't know. I mean, I think this is pretty impossible in general, you know, altogether. I mean, I think he has to cure his violence before he can, you know, tell everybody what plane to get on and not help him get on it. Mm hmm but I mean, there's, there's something about the two. I think they like to hear each other talk. They're the only two that will continually talk to each other long enough, you know, so they can get it all out. Because everybody else walks away and just like, have to go. <laughs> but meditating is fine, but how do you meditate? How do you meditate with people that are smoking cigarettes and drinking alcohol? I mean, you still have to get through to them on some level. So you sit you down really and drink alcohol and smoke cigarettes. I don't know. There's really a lot of people who want to be gotten through, and I see that most people who drink alcohol and cigarettes really don't want to be gotten to yet. Because there's a million other people who want to be gotten to that already point, given Chris, up that I would stuff. Still, I would still be sitting in New York, it, being a model and doing whatever fucking glamour trip I was on. If it wasn't for LSE, I wouldn't know anything about spiritual things. And a lot of people helping me. And, and so a lot of people telling me this is the way. Well, wonder if they just looked at me in the trip that I was in and said, forget about her, she'll never make it spiritually. Yes, you she can't can. say this person is more spiritual Certain than that person. Are farther on you the can't path say because you smoke people. cigarettes, you're not going to go to heaven. You're That's not a bunch of bullshit. To me. Uh, some people will make it on cigarettes, you know, but very few. I mean, in the, the minute that you start judging people, you lose, you flunk. Okay, where's heaven? Heaven is freedom from suffering, old age, and disease, yeah? Whatever. Cigarettes cause whatever. That's what heaven but who is. Says, freedom but who from says all the that? method of getting there? I mean, Hartley doesn't love anybody less than anybody else. She's not at least not running around judging oh, come people. On. You not saying you are less spiritual than you she is. You love some people more than other people. Just because and you come on the and start so yelling about you can't fucking meditate. What's that whole balance between that? To say fucking and meditate in the same sentence. You same learn. Okay, you I learn from it. everybody. 
you learn by looking at people doing what they are, you're learning as much by observing them and their trips. When you really you want God, you'll it. discriminate life and you'll get there, but you don't really want God, so it's useless for me to well, talk Well, what do you, you think I'm doing here, for heaven's sake? I don't know. Even Chris. I don't really know. I mean, I haven't talked to him very much. I mean, he keeps going out coming over and giving me lots of elbows and ribs, you know, and he's so completely violent and talking about being peaceful and concentrating and so, you know, tightened up. I mean, I feel like he's working under tremendous strain. I don't really wish he'd work it out. How about Baron? <laughs> Baron wants to be king. It's something, I just don't think he cares. There's enough respect for human beings as people. For him, it's much more important since he's going to relate most of what he does to a, a massive population. <laughs> We can cultivate the deserts. We can plant the mediums of interstate highways. We can build a system that will take care of the 85% of the wasted vegetation we have daily. Let's turn this army into an ecological army. Let's replant the planet. Do you think the power elite wants you to know what you can do? Do you think they want you to know that your car doesn't have to wear out? That you don't need medicine? Of course not. You couldn't be manipulated if you knew you could be free. And you can be. Start making a back on your goddamn head. As you begin to lop off the leaders, the organization itself becomes more and more paranoid and, you know, becomes, gets this feeling of defeat consistently. Mm -hmm. Yes, that everybody you know, disappears. Do you think that's happened to the Panthers already? That they're like, this feeling of defeat is already there? It sort of seems like. No, but the, the defeat, as far as the Panthers are concerned, is hmm. irrelevant. They've done exactly what they're supposed to do. I mean, do. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're their purpose. I mean, they've united the people. <coughs> and the people a sense of respect they woke themselves. <laughs> Uh, the connection between you and Hendrix is pretty amazing. You both got Capricorn rising, although he's a Sagittarius near a Scorpio. Sagittarius is a pretty good luck for Scorpios. Really? Well, yeah, anywhere in the zodiac where a sign is following the sign, the sign preceding is always very fortunate from the sign following. Does Jimmy have a lot to say or is he just into his music? Oh, he's lots to say. I mean, that's why, that, yes, exactly. I mean, it's incredibly bright. I mean, that's why it's not such an easy trip. You know what I mean? People just sort of think, oh, well, this is, you know, somebody being slightly uptight and annoyed. And the more they realize that he's actually right on them. I mean, it doesn't help him very much, but he is right on most people. Cosmic brothers and sisters of Maui to the Rainbow Bridge Vibratory Color Sound Experiment. We're here for a very, very particular purpose, I think, that applies to all our brothers and sisters all across the planet. The Rainbow Bridge is not just a bridge. Just as there are cells that make up our body, we are cells in the body of the planetary being. And the purpose of the humanity for being on this planet is to build that bridge between the heart and the higher mental and spiritual centers of the planetary being. 
And every higher thought and every higher action that each of us participate in builds that bridge. And the reason that we, we've all kind of dropped out to here, and it's the first time that anybody's dropped out in any large numbers since the Christians dropped out of Rome, then we want to convey that thought to everyone else. So instead of just being kind of a receptive, groovy audience and have what we had at every love and concert forever and ever up to now, if we just turn on our energy so Jimmy can pick into that and lead us across that bridge and everybody all over the world is going to pick up on that. So we're all counting on you and here's your chance and Jimmy should be here in a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you. 
Do a thing um, dedicated to that little girl over there called Harley. Thing called Foxy Lady. Look out. <laughs>
they gotta leave town because there's old lady that won around because you know, nobody they want him in town and all the downs, you know, the cats all low and everything. But then he's gonna get it together because he's going down the train station with his little baby and his little pack on his back. Come back and buy the town and maybe if the girl does it to him one more time, I even marry her and give a piece to her. It's called getting my heart back together. I don't know what it's about myself. <laughs> Wait around the train station, waiting for that train to take me, take me away from that lonesome town.
going somewhere but not taking your body with it? Mm. Outer space? You bet? Yeah. Where do you go when you go? I don't know that. It seems like it's this little center in space that's just rotating, constantly rotating. And there's these soles on it. And like you're sitting there like as cattle at a water hole. There's no rap actually going on. There's no emotions that are strung out actually. You know. Next thing you know, you'd be drawn to a certain thing. And also like it's bright. And you see yourself being the page being turned, and see yourself next to a uh, soldier being cut down. You know, you arrive on a scene as where everything is beautiful, lush green, brighter than day, blair position. And like you see a completely crystal scene of a soldier being shot down. And all of a sudden you feel yourself helping that soldier up, but not not his uniform, but you're feeling yourself held in another vibe, another sense of that soldier. It seems like a soul of it, you know, you help me to And then you whisk back to the uh, water hole or the oasis of the soul. And you're sitting there and you're wrapping again or something, eating a banana cream pie. And all of a sudden, the next thing you know, you see, looking yourself down at the left paw of the Sphinx and the tomb of King Blur and his friendly fashions. And uh, it's all night social workers with mattresses tied around their backs, screaming, curb service, curb service. They want the auto bill, curb service, curb service. You know, with the third eye in the middle of the pyramid. Uh, then we find ourselves drifting across the desert sands, try as a bone, still going towards home. And then finally you find yourself as Cleopatra, uh, up here giving you demands, at the same time begging you for uh, fetishes. Invent something or else I'll kick your ass. Well, kind of these. Often the girl forms to be Cleopatra. Peel what? And often um, the Hawaiian mountains open up and call out and say, excuse me for a while I, uh, <coughs> another 13,000 feet, we go higher and higher, and Cleopatra has this beautiful raven here, and what are you supposed to do, man? Except lay there and play the part. And so I'm laying there playing the part that great chokes me almost, but I can't let the joke come out, because, you know, I have to be together, right? Mm-hmm. So I said, oh, <coughs> groovy great wine there, Cleo, oh, hell, I mean, Let's get on. Forget about all that stuff back there. And forget about you and your scene. This is go out in the hills and relax and live. No, but I have this conscience. I must do this. I must do that. I must do. Oh, forget about it, Cleo, man. You are a woman. I'm a man. Come on, let's get it on, man. Let's go out and get ourselves a great find out in the valley somewhere. But the side of mouth of CVI or something. I don't know. Hell. No, 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 no. My parents, my traditions, my snake. Oh, you could be in the asket. You know who you asked. Thank you. 
people could not come up to anybody on the street and say, I'm from Venus, they would lose that nobility. There would be an ego speaking out and say, look, I'm from Venus, now what are you going to do about this? No, they are humble people, and they'll wait until in your own eyes you recognize who they are. They're your friend. That is why. why they call Earth. They try and hide all that from us. Every time a sighting is made or something, they try the to government, The government knows that their ships operate with electromagnetic energy. The, the fuel companies and the electrical companies of the world rule the economy system. 
If electromagnetic energy were released to the public, it would mean the end of all the fuel companies and electrical companies in the world for the free energy itself would give you free electricity, free heat, free hot running water. You would no longer need fuel for any of your automobiles or your planes or anything. And also to take a spaceship to another planet, you would not need the fuel. Are there any people in the governments around the world right now who are working with the Space Brothers? There are scientists who, who are working with them. Dr. Ho Herman Ober has made the statement, the space people, if it had not been for them, we would not be out in space and we would not have a space program today. And Dr. Ober is the father of rocketry. He also was the teacher of Werner von Braun. Could you tell us once more what the Space Brothers say about LSD? Any of the drugs, which you call mind-expanding drugs, call it LSD or any of the others, force the cells of your body to expose the intelligence which lies in them. By forcing any of the cells in your body to open up, you are using mentality to reach an understanding of yourself. By taking the drug, you are egotistically taking it in order to find the Christ. Christ will never be revealed to you through a force of any kind. You will have a momentary pleasure, but will it go on until the next lifetime and be achieved? Will you as a new infant in a new body remember that you did deep breathing in order to achieve this? Or will you achieve it naturally? What you've just said is, you know, so completely valid and certainly gives me a lot of inner peace. And I think you know, it's something that everyone here needed to, because we're having so much trouble just keeping ourselves together within ourselves, although we all have separate viewpoints. But there are some forces and certain elements on this planet that seem hell-bent on polluting it beyond repair. And unless they see the light pretty quickly, our light will go out. And I can't seem to find a method of dealing with what I term their particular form of insanity or their separate path that has any gentleness involved, since I seem to believe that they, are, they must be illogically insane or working on some sort of plan that has no relationship to the rest of the people that inhabit the Earth at the moment. If you go into the barrier and face it with faith and confidence that you'll make it, you will understand it. The space people will never forget the planet of kindred souls. This is the planet of their little brothers and sisters. And they'll keep trying. Hey, baby. Where are you coming from? She looked at me and smiled and looked in the space and said, I'm coming from the land of a new rising sun.